prophecies, revelations, economic collapse, martial law, social and civil war, aliens, human hybrids, Nephilim, the great deception, world chaos, tsunamis. You want to stay tuned for special edition End Time Revelations with Pastor Henry Schaefer and Pastor Steve Hall. CSRA, welcome to another episode of Project Seer. Well, I'm excited about the program. I got my sub host here in the program with me here. I got uh, uh, Minister um, Watson here with me. Yeah, I'm good to be here today. All right. We're going to have a great time today. I'm looking forward to it. Looking we're gonna, forward to it. We're going to follow up with what we've been talking about. Yes. yes, sir. Let everybody know we're going to be talking about entities again. We've been talking about Trey Smith last week. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more about visitation, though, because yeah. he's talking about entities and he's talking about uh, how um, and exposing those entities that are, you know, that are upon us and, and, and what have you. So, you know, we're going to be talking about those kind of things here today. So I want to get everyone to settle on back for the next yes. for the next hour. I'm looking, gonna, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a great time. So let me just uh, give you some uh, take care of my preliminaries here uh, that I need to that uh, you can check us out on YouTube. We are streaming live to YouTube. This is really simple to go to, is go to Studio WUCC on on uh, YouTube. Type that in at the top, Studio WUCC, and you'll see a little thing that says Live Event. Click on that. You're looking right into the studio uh, here with us. And then on if you're listening uh, in your car and you get ready to leave to go out, go to WUCC999.com wucc99.com on your smartphone get your browser or your safari whatever you have what device you have go there type in wucc999.com you look right into our studio there you can see on the right hand side of the screen a little red button that says listen live anywhere in the world you can listen to this program isn't that amazing that's the that's the voice of truth that's it so you're tuned in to 99.9 wcc williston another episode of projects here i'm the host henry schaefer and evangelist stephen watson is here with us you know and i'll say something else pastor Uh, we had somebody asked us the other day if we'd give the uh call-in phone number earlier so they could write it down uh because we've had some people say they wanted to call in and they they can't remember the numbers so yeah so let's go ahead and tell them do you, do you remember you know what it is or I, I, you, I'm, I'm the gonna, one that knows. I'm gonna give you the math <laughs> 803-335-3131 that's 803-335-3131 now we're gonna do about bottom of the hour yeah that'd about be 2 30 we're gonna open up the phone line so you can uh share with us your visitation and things like that so yeah. um um evangelist let's go ahead and let's just kind of pick it up from the bible standpoint of visitation i'm going to let you grasp that and talk about a few of those things in the bible there and i'm going to turn around and get some things ready to put on the screen well i just believe that uh visitations uh you know we know they've happened all through the word of god and we also know that it's evident in uh many christian lives today where people um i know people and i'm sure you do too out there that uh, have had visitations. Uh, God has in some way um, um, allowed you to, to have a vision or a dream or, or something has come to you and you knew that it was a visitation of God or the Holy Spirit directing you in the path that you're to go. Um, we, uh, we know all through the Word of God that there were times, uh, and even if we, you know, we can't go through everything right now, but, but if we even started out just with the fact that Mary... Here this here's this 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 woman who was a virgin and she was uh, chosen by God to to give birth to Christ and here she is and she's visited and fear not you know and she uh, she was given this uh, uh, great um, honor that she was going to give birth to the Messiah 
And so, and then we go all through the Bible. There's many times there were things that happened that we know had to be miraculously um, divine in nature, and that God had his hand on the uh, pulse of the situation, and people went through visitations. Uh, uh, and you may have had a visitation out there. Somebody out there may call in later. Uh, my mother had a visitation when she was a young woman. She uh, was in a place called Oniana, Alabama. And she was standing in the dusk of the evening, and she was looking out across the yard, and, and there was a field there. And she saw three angels having conversation. And she said she wasn't scared. She knew that it was real. She knew it was divine. She said she bowed her head in respect because she didn't want to disturb them. And she said they looked at her, and then they disappeared. She wow. said, she said nobody will believe that. But she said, but I can testify it happened, and I know it happened. And so I believe that um, we've all, I've, I've had situations that I can talk about, but I want to open up the mic. Uh, uh, I don't want to take over the mic, and I just want to just say that we're going to discuss uh, entities and visitations in such a way that we want you to realize that there are spiritual divine uh, visitations. But there are also the the uh, the enemies a counterattack That's right. with evil uh, intentions to try to deceive you and bring uh, great delusion to you and to uh, to to try to snatch you away from the hand of God. So we're going to talk about some strange stuff and uh, and and then some people out there you <laughs> never you may have never ever heard of it and you may not even believe it. But let me tell you something: the enemy has every type of deceptive uh, manifestation that he can conceive to try to steal the hearts of men. And we're seeing a lot of strange things in the world today, a lot of strange uh, uh, reports of things that are being witnessed. And uh, I believe there is a demonic uh, realm that is trying to take over the world today. So, you know, take it away. Okay, there, here, here's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to kind of bring it up to... Uh, where we're at as far as like uh, in modern times, uh, mo most current times here uh, as well. But we're going to go back uh, to 1975. Yes. We're going to talk about, uh, and you the one who brought this up to my attention. Yes. Was a man by the name of Travis Walton. Yes. And he had a UFO incident. We're going to run, there's a there's a, um, a program, a, a movie mm -hmm. that has been made of this. And we're yes. going to run some of that as well. Uh, when we get ready to get started on that. So let me put this up as far as Travis Walton. Um, 1970, November 1975, while working with the logging crew in the um, Appalachia National App Apache uh, Site Grias National Forest in yeah, Arizona. It was near, near a place called Snowflake, Arizona. There you go. Walton. Uh, and and uh, he reappeared five days later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And in the movie, now the movie, uh, Fire from the Sky, I believe, or Fire That's in it, the Sky. Fire, fire in the Sky. Uh, the movie naturally had a theatrical Hollywood uh, presentation. But there's a, there's a truer uh, sense of the story that uh, is not uh, uh, told by Hollywood. And so, um, and, and so when you know the true story of Travis Walton, uh, even as of today, it has never been disproved. He's never been caught in a lie, and he's never been found to be deceptive when he's taken lie detector tests. So I believe he had some type of visitation. Okay. And so, you know, as the listener, you have to make your own determination on some things. Study and read and, 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 and investigate your own, you know, conclusions. But Travis Walton is a very good example of someone who had an experience and um so you know we'll take it from here. yeah let's put it on here we have a, a about a three minute uh video that we're going to run um that's been speaking about his story here then we're going to talk about his abduction and then we're going to say hey this is one that's documented and made a movie out of it that's it so let's just go ahead and play this here uh real quick with travis uh travis walton here here we go hi my name is jennifer stein I've completed a film called Travis, the true story of Travis Walton. In this film, you're going to see archived interviews of the logging crew, as well as new and updated interviews we've done. You're going to have a tour of the actual site 
where the UFO incident took place. We're going to learn about new forensic evidence which has come to light in the last 40 years. And you're going to be able to see the incredible experience that Travis Walton went through and how this has affected his life over the last 40 years. It was a terrifying experience, you know. I imagine uh, the most shook up one was probably Steve. He was only like 17. I think he actually lied about his age to get the job out there. Yeah, I was 17, so I was, I was the kid. I thought we was going to go to jail for murder. There was times I was saying we need to go back. There was times I was saying we need to go get help. You know, I mean, it went back. Everybody was going back and forth, you know, in their own minds and between each other. When we got back there and we looked around the area and we couldn't find Travis, that's when it hit Mike. Mike and Travis were best buddies then, you know, and stuff. And, and I think he felt really bad about taking off and leaving him like that. We came off the mountain after we was looking for Travis and we couldn't find him. And we pulled in there and Kenny got out and called the sheriff's department. I think Kenny just told him it was a missing person. He didn't tell him what was up, you know. It didn't come directly to me, it came to a, a deputy sheriff in Heber who called me on the phone and then he gave me a little more detail on it about you guys coming in from the woods and, and something got your attention. See a man in South Korea parked out in front of the station here. Deputy Ellison arrived. Three of us volunteered right away to get in his car with him and tell him what had happened. He says that he didn't believe us or disbelieve us, you know, he was just going to be neutral. But before we went up on the hill to radio, for him to radio the sheriff, we better be certain. What the hell happened to this young man? How is it that he could just disappear? We're a rough looking bunch then, you know, and uh, a bunch of us out there with chainsaws and that, and some conflicts here and there, you know, so they, um, they just immediately start assuming, well, they killed this guy, you know, yeah, because they weren't going to believe that wild story we were telling them. The police, and no one can blame them, had to look at the much more obvious real-world possibility that these hard-working, tough, blue-collar guys, even though they were friends, there was a falling out, there was a fight, an argument, and one way or another, um, Travis lost his life. The body was hidden. I hope you're taking interest in this film. If you'd like to learn more about it, visit TravisWaltonTheMovie.com. There's a wonderful conference coming up in Arizona in 2015 on November 5th. And if you'd like to learn more about that, visit SkyFireSummit.com. Wow, there you have it. Now, so let's just go ahead and talk about it real quick because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce off this here real quick where it says that um, the other five men were frightened, supposedly drove away. Uh, Walton claimed that he awoke in a hospital-like room. Yes. Being observed by three short, bald creatures. Now, that would be kind of frightening if you woke up yeah. in a place like that. Just waking up in a hospital to me yes. is something like that I wouldn't want to do. But when they left, the person entered the room wearing some sort of a helmet and led Walton to another room where three more people put a clear ma a plastic mask over his face and he blacked out. Walton has claimed... He remembers nothing else until he found himself walking alongside the highway with yes. the flying saucer departing above him. Yeah. So now we know that, uh, of course, they investigated, made a movie out of it, couldn't yeah. find where he had made anything wrong. Go ahead. And when it was first reported, when they first reported that he was he was missing, uh, like like the uh, video was saying, they they actually believed the young men had gotten into some kind of physical altercation with right, one another. Right, right. One of them had possibly killed Travis. And so they they thought it was a cover story. And then uh and, and pretty much so the town and, and the area, the county, they they were really giving the young men a hard time until five days later Travis is found walking down the road and and the reports were that he was he was uh, walking down the road with no clothes on, and so uh, and that part I can't verify, but but the thing was that uh, um, every medical test, every everything that was ever done to try to disprove his claim could not be disproved. 
He passed his lie detector test. He's passed just about everything right. psychologically. So we know that something happened. Right. Something supernatural happened. So l- let's do this here. Yeah. Let's let's take a moment here and let's educate our audience for a yes. moment. And we're going to go back to a uh, a book that I have here. It's called The Omega Conspiracy. And it is written by Dr. I.D.E. Thomas. Now, hold on one second. got to put Dr. I.D.E. Thomas on the screen here real quick. <laughs> It, one is he right here? Was it number six or number five? Okay, this yeah. is Dr. I.D.E. Thomas. So if you're looking in on YouTube, you can check him out. And uh, we're going to put him up on the screen here. This is the man right here uh, on the screen. So you can get a, get a visual of him. And uh, what he did, he's wrote the book called The Omega Conspiracy. Now, let me tell you how I came across this book. Is, uh, you know, I followed uh, uh, Dr. L.A. Marzulli and uh, check out a lot of this information that he has. And he said that uh doc now here let me just insert this here we're talking about entities yes and when we're talking about entities we're talking about trey smith Mm -hmm. and trey smith's new release of the videos the dvds coming out about entities and all this has really opened up the doorway for us to really discuss entities and what are they i've got my set of entities coming through Mm -hmm. i did make a a connection with um um, a Trey Smith group, and hopefully I can get a, a, an interview, yes. um, you know, on the program here because I want to talk about uh, his work and what he does. So anyway, with that being said, has really driven me to the point to where, okay, what is the others written about entities as well? And now we're ta- we're bouncing off of um, Travis Walton that had an encounter yes. with these beings, and he was actually abducted. So when you start saying, well, what kind of abduction did he have? So when you start looking at, again, Dr. Uh, I.D.E. Thomas, Ellie Marzulli's mentor, you start going through this book, he, it, a lot of the work has already been done for us, his research. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas is a, was, a, was a man that uh, was, uh, worked at um, a, um, where, where, where they have Bible studies at, at a seminary, and he, it came across that he was able to, was requested, back in the day in the 60s and the 70s to come up with a program that would tie the ufos to the bible so that that pastors and ministers would be educated with what was going on and one quarter led to another semester and another semester to another semester to and that's all he did because it was so enlightening to the um to the seminary that it turned his work into figuring out what are these entities so he wrote the book called the omega conspiracy showing how the tie-in is in the last days with the return of the Nephilims and things like that. So he really put a lot of work into this book, and that's what you and I were sharing before we came together here, is that they have identified the encounters, that there are encounters of different levels. Different stages. Just different stages of close encounters. So the science of UFOlogy refers to three distinct categories of sightings. Uh, in his book here, it's on page uh, uh, 38. If you if you have a book or if you're going to get it, you can check this out because it's wonderful. Uh, it's close encounters of the first kind. And what this is is that refers to just um, a mere sighting of an unidentified flying object at close quarters. So you're just seeing it at close yeah. quarters. The second close encounter of the second kind, this includes not only the sighting, of a UFO at close quarters, but also the presence of certain physical records of the craft being uh, having been there. These yes. records uh, may be tangible marks on the ground, like scorching of, of grass, interference with ele- electric uh, circuits, or physical effects on animals and humans, like temporary paralysis or weightlessness. Yes. So those that's the that's a close encounters of the second kind yeah. that's identified in his book chemical traces might be in that too. exactly yeah. anything that would have a, a trace you know I, I would even think the crop circles yes and those type things because i believe that they're tied into that, that the phenomenon yes. there as well so look at this here now the th- close encounters of the third kind this is where the movie came from but let's see if it fits in. He, if he if uh travis uh walton that we we're talking about being abducted where does he fall in at uh, this is the most bizarre and incredible of the three encounters, for it includes, in addition to the two distinctives above, a direct confrontation with a space being, an entity, 
sometimes called a humanoid. These sightings are so incredible that scientists of the caliber of Dr. Hynek would gladly admit them altogether if uh, they would do so without offense or scientific uh, intelligence. So when we look at these things here, that the entity has direct contact with that with that being. And I think we gave you a list, bro. Yes, yes. There's, there's more there that uh, it talks about um, the, the, of the fourth kind and the fifth kind. And the sixth kind. Did you see that on there? Yeah, I was uh, looking at I was looking at that too. But I was also thinking about you know when they did the the movie The Close Encounters of, of the Third Kind. I cannot remember his name, but there was a French uh, scientist in the movie, and he was uh, the one who, if you've seen the movie, you know he he was a real he, he's the one that figured out the hand movements yeah. when they did the the sound that people were claiming they were hearing in the sky. And um, he was based on a real French scientist. Yeah, I think it's on this thing. And here. and so um, one of the things that uh, that really uh, uh, is interesting about that movie and the Close Encounters of the Third Kind is is how much uh, effort in the movie that the government was doing to try to uh, not allow this uh, this uh, visitation or discovery in the movie. To be known by the uh, the people in the in the area or people anywhere. Yeah. And so, um, uh, one of the things that that we have seen yeah. all across uh, the board is that for everyone who has come forth and said, you know, I had a visitation or I had this encounter with right. with the UFO, uh, there's never been an attempt to prove that that person was telling the truth or that they were possibly in reality, saying the truth and and that something happened, right. it was always the negative to yeah. to 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 create um, uh, a question mark over that person. Okay. Let me pick it up here with the encounters of the fourth kind, because the extension to the Heineck scale, the one that they came up with, this is close encounters of the fourth kind. Uh, you know, we've heard of first kind, second kind, mm-hmm. and of course the movie of the third kind. This is the fourth kind right here a UFO event in which a human is abducted by a UFO or its occupants. This type was not included in Hynek's original close encounter scale. Now, number four, the fifth, the fifth close encounter. Now, this is where I think, I think the reason why they're adding to these is because they're getting more, more, more and closer and more defined. The close encounters of the fifth kind is a UFO event that involves direct communications between aliens and humans. Uh, this type of close encounter was named by um, uh, Stephen M. Greer's SETI group and is described as bilateral contact experiences through consciousness, voluntary, and proactive human-initiated cooperative communications with extraterrestrial intelligence. Okay, now we're going to move to number six. That means they actually talked with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, number six is the encounters of the sixth kind. And this is one is death of a human or animal associated with a UFO sighting. Yes. Although some might consider this a more severe example of the uh, second kind encounter. Now here's the last one. And this is where we hear a lot from now yes. in this here. Close encounters of the seventh kind is the creation of a human slash alien hybrid either by sexual reproduction or by artificial scientific methods. Yes. Now, I think that's where when we're talking about as it was in the days of Noah. Yes. This is where we're going to right here. Uh, close encounters of the seventh kind with a human alien hybrid. They were Nephilims. And, and the reality of it, uh, what we can document goes all the way back to 1938 uh, when uh, Nazi uh, Germany was uh, beginning to become a power. And Adolf Hitler uh, was involved not just in the occult, but he was also involved in allowing scientists to uh, have no limits on what they wanted to research, what they wanted to do. And they were uh, dealing with DNA, and they were taking DNA, and they were trying to actually create hybrids. Right. And they did do quite a few things that is still to this day classified. Um, They actually wanted to develop a hunting reserve that uh nazi generals and such could have to go and uh, hunt in and they wanted to go back and create creatures 
that uh, had been wiped out through extinction, extin- uh, through extinction uh, by man right. in the past, bring those back, and then they were going to put them on these hunting reserves and hunt these wow. these animals. So wow. hybrid hybrid thing was a yeah. You had mentioned uh, that uh, he, he was one of the scientists that was in the Close Encounters, and who it was was um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind was Heinick Allen uh, Heinick uh, yes. was his name. And uh, he's the one that came up with the, the encounters, and they were added more and more to his list. But he made a cameo appearance uh, in the film itself. So, you know, they honored him in that, so they put him into it. So he, he, here's the main thing is that we wanted to make sure that we educate the yes. listeners on the encounters of the visitations Yes. so that there are classifications of encounters of, of these beings and all. And, again, Trey Smith of Entities, uh, L.A. Marzulli and, um, you know, the different ones that we have here are, are, are talking about, you know, these different entities. Let's go ahead and, and now, because we got 25, with 25 minutes, we're going to open up the uh, the phone lines. You're listening to who? Project Seer. That's it. And, uh, and we're kind of out there talking <laughs> about entities today, visitations, and just trying to let people be aware yeah. of who they are, what yeah. they are, uh, and uh, what's going on. Didn't we want to talk about the... The one that was in Alabama. Did yes. you tell us about the yeah. Alabama one? Do you have that one? Let's yeah, bring that the one, one up. In, the one in Alabama. What's now this so, is amazing story this, here. This one here was uh, incredible when I got to to looking and doing research. It took you place. Go ahead and in, talk about that. Hey, took ahead. place in 1854, and it was in Selma, Alabama. There was a farmer. His name was Aaron Williams, and uh, he was walking across his property, and uh, it was a fall day. And he vanished, and he was he vanished supposedly in the full view of his wife, his child, and several neighbors. And a search showed no holes where he could have fallen or fell into. Uh, he was just gone. He had just disappeared. Wow. And uh, the townspeople joined the search, but there never was no sign of him. He was never discovered, and he was eventually declared dead. Um What's what's odd about this is this in 1854, there wasn't a whole lot of distraction uh, for them to actually see him disappear. Uh, their minds had not uh, um, been filtered with a whole lot of stuff, especially UFO situations and things like that. And they were I think they were just speaking just truly. He was walking across the field, he disappeared. You might say, Well now that's odd. But you know, there's been disappearances of people. Right. Uh, and there were people that were translated in the Bible. Well, you know, let's talk about yeah. walking across the field. Yeah. You know, there's the and I'm just gonna kinda get off subject here for a moment, but just talk about people walking across the field and disappearing is uh, of course we saw it in the Bible. Yeah. You know, where they just disappeared a Philip, chari- Philip the chari- yeah. chariot came down. Yeah. And picked up uh, Elijah, but let's talk about this here: the uh, Mammoth Cave. Yes, that's in um, Kentucky. Yes, Ma- Mammoth Cave was found by accident. For those who do not know, when you hear the story of Mammoth Cave, a you know, and that is like the largest underground cavern in the North American continent. Yes, and it is so huge. I mean, it's just uh, huge. They got miles and miles and tours that go through um, Mammoth Cave, but the way it was found was a man was walking his dog in a field and the dog fell through a hole and just disappeared and they started going back to dig where did the dog go and they found the hole in the ground and they opened up and it was mammoth cave i just said that to tell you this here so there's a man that you were talking the one that we're talking about here in alabama back of the unsolved mystery where did he go uh walking through the field they i'm sure they walked out to where he's at and Mm -hmm. there is no hole in the ground there like was the nothing, dog there was no there was nothing there you know so trying to figure out where did this man go there's no hole in the ground like the dog fell through yeah. a mammoth cave so they were able to determine that it was something that swallowed him up but here is a, he just disappeared poofy was gone yeah he, he 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 was gone and he he never came back you know his family eventually uh, had him declared dead and the story goes and no one really knows if william's story is real or just a fictional account that's been embellished over the years, showing up first in print and now online. But I believe, mm-hmm. you know, they're trying to, well, you got to realize what they're doing. They're trying to say there's no evidence. We mm-hmm. don't know what's going on. But these stories, 
that I have come to find out that a lot of these things that are handed down are stories that really happen. Yes. They may have been embellished some, but there's an event that caused this to happen, and they're not sure what they are. I believe that a lot of the things that are, are questionable um, should have had more investigation, more uh, more intrigue should have been put into an effort to try to uh, prove some stuff as being true than it was to, to try to create uh, a deception and say it was not. Because most people, I'm going to be honest with you, I've learned through the years that most people, if they tell you something and they believe it happened, then something happened. And how they maybe describe it or how they uh, interpret what they uh, encountered, um, everybody sees things different. If you take uh, the four Gospels uh, of the Bible, uh, you have uh, almost uh, a real clear view of, uh, of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. But you got four different men who are describing it from four different places in four different directions. It's, it's like if a house was on fire and they were all standing on one side of the house, they're going to describe what they saw from their point of view. And that's what happens when somebody encounters something. They they give their point of view of what they experienced. That's right. And 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 so um, sometimes they can't give you um, articulate detail about you know how big this was or how small that was or you know I, I think sometimes people are just saying, look, something happened, and I can't. I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. Something happened. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So let's do this here. So there there's things that is out there. These these reports. Yes. There's these um, these things that have happened to people, but they are not sure uh, at what all is taking place. So here's here's what I want to do is that in the book with um, Dr. I. D. E. Thomas, because again the research has done has been done, and all I'm doing is researching the event. You know why they call it research? Because it's already been searched once. Yes. So it's been researched again. <laughs> And when we do it, we're going to research it again because it's already been searched once. Yes. So when I'm doing my research, I'm researching his research that he's already searched. So he's already done it. So And that's what's the good part about it is finding the good source. Be yes. eclectic in your material and, and look at this here. So when we look at um, his book here, now, now I'm going to page uh, 51. It's called the Condon Report. And this report was done by the Air Force. We're talking about are UFOs real? Mm-hmm. What has the what has the Air Force done to to uh, embellish this to be able to find out? Tell us what's going on. So uh, here's what the the Condon report is. Now let me read it here in the book. And before we proceed to examine the hypothesis in greater detail, it is interesting to note the various names that have been used by different authors to describe these visitors to our planet. Yes. So we're talking about the UFOs and who are they? Some refer to them as humanoids, others as UFO, UFO knots, others are UFO sapiens, or paraphysical beings, and, you ready, spiritual beings. So when we look at this, scientists of late have shown a preference for the last designation in referring more and more to these visitors as spiritual entities. Now, this book is written back in the 70s. Yes. They're telling these things are spiritual entities and indeed to the whole UFO activity as a spiritual or paraphysical phenomenon. This was the term used in the Condon Report. This is a very famous report that you can read about it. It's already been um, uh, put into the book here for for the meat that we need. We're talking about the meat, no fat, just the meat. And uh, so this was the term used by the Condon Report. The document published by an Air Force-sponsored scientific group at the University of Colorado under the direction of Dr. E.U. Condon, um, January 1969. This report has been much criticized and even ridiculed by the certain UFO ufologists as another example of the government whitewashing. And I have yes. it uh, highlighted yellow, whitewashing. But in fairness to the report, it should be noted that it did arrive in three significant conclusions. So here's what I'm saying. In They're saying it's been whitewashed. But what did the Condon Report say? Three things. First of all, it says, it all but demolished the idea that Earth was being visited by creatures from another planet. They're saying, 
We do not believe these creatures are from another galaxies or other planets. They admitted that few mysteries still remain, though, they couldn't mm-hmm. explain. But it concluded there was no hard evidence that UFO spaceships are extraterrestrial civilizations. They're saying they are not from other planets. They are from so, here. So they figure out, well, where are they from? The second thing they came up with is the objects in the sky, and they're sometimes are noted on the ground, were just as material as any other physical objects around us although may only be temporary so these objects appear and they disappear and you and i were talking about this before the show we're saying because they're found on radar yes radar bounces off of a hard object so it has to be able to send back it has to be physical material that rebounces back that bounces back okay bounces signal back so we know that and then the last one is this this is the the one i wanted to get to why i brought this up in Dr. Uh, I.D.E. Thomas's book. Now we're on page 52, and we're talking about the Condon Report. The last thing that he says that they boiled it down to, these three things. Now the last one is the sightings of UFOs, spaceships, and aircraft, and their occupants should be attributed to paraphysical phenomenon. Here's what they said. That is, UFOs belong to the same categories as seances, spiritist movements, etc in short they are paraphysical and when you put all those together in my own words now they're demonic yes when you're saying that they are categorized as seances and spirit movements they are the same thing as demons is what is appearing to us here in the last days that was the condon report and uh, that put out i thought that was very interesting I i think that for for a lot of people especially the christian community um sometimes they don't uh, they don't see this, and they don't understand it, and a lot of preachers don't even discuss it. And I think it's because lack of information, but a lot of it's a lack of being um, diligent in reading and, and, and keeping up with things. You know, the Word of God is so complete, yet we have writings uh enoch the book of enoch we we have other books that we can go to that were not put in the bible that uh they don't just support the word of god but they enhance uh information that we don't get maybe in certain scripture uh we can go to enoch and and we can read how he um he unveils a little more background about the condition of the world during the period of time before noah and we also see that Enoch, for instance, he was not just discussed uh, in the New Testament. Jesus himself recognized Enoch. And, uh, and so um, uh, we know Enoch was translated. And, and we know that Enoch, uh, um, most people that, that study the Word of God and understand revelations will tell you that they believe that Enoch will appear during the tribulation right. uh, and be one of the two prophets that will uh, uh, preach in, in the streets and, and die and then uh, lay there for three days and then come back and then ascend back up into heaven. Uh, there's so much mystery and, and unbelievable um, detail to some of the strange things that we read in the Bible that people kind of like, they kind of like distance themselves from that. Yeah. And I think it's because... Maybe it's hard for them to believe or well, accept it. I, I think, don't know. I think that's what's so good about um, uh, I.D.E. Thomas, uh, Dr. I.D.E. Thomas, and his book, The Omega Conspiracy, Satan's Last Assault on God's Kingdom. Yeah. Ellie Marzulli is the one who wrote the, um, the preface to it, you know, the, uh, uh, the foreword to it. And he really built up Dr. Uh, I.D.E. Thomas. And he was saying things like, you know, like we know that, his background and letting us know who his background is and what he has done as far as being um, uh, uh, teaching ministers and his job was to educate them on ufos i think that's a great book yes if you want to realize this was his task was to educate ministers get the book and read it but not only that you take off bounce off of that and think about the work that uh, trey smith is doing 
uh, revealing the entities and how he's tying the nephilims together and doing all of this i want to encourage yeah. people to get it and what and what people what people have to do is you kind of have to think out of the box now i we had somebody one day ask well why would they abduct somebody and do these tests on them um you go back to uh genesis sixth chapter where they started manipulating DNA and taking uh, the creatures of the of the earth and started uh, trying to do different things with them and manipulate their their bodies, manipulate their uh, uh, their character so that they would have a host to go in when they died. Um, I believe that's what they're still doing. They're still trying to find ways to to manipulate DNA to uh, infect the DNA of, right. of, of, of mankind with their little uh, evil uh, input. And God rejected that. That's why, that's why what happened to the people in the world before uh, the flood, they had become so perverse in their imagination that they were taking the birds of the air, they were taking the animals, and they were manipulating how they were designed by God, and they would take maybe um, a locust and a mm -hmm. scorpion and put them together. And then you wonder where in the world would a creature like that come from in Revelation that could sting people for five months? Well, they are in the abyss, and they've been caged, and they were designed by those uh, fallen ones who manipulated DNA, and they were punished for it. And they were caged, and they sit in the abyss now. But they will be released, according to the book of Revelation, in, in the last days. That's right. To bring torment on those who do not have the seal of God on. Well, you know, somebody listening to that, they're going, holy, I, I can't believe this. You know, it's in the word of God. Yeah, you know what, uh, 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 you know what I, I hear people say, and uh, especially when they do comments, they comment about some of the stuff that we're doing and everything. And some of these people who's been following uh, this for a long time, especially uh, understanding what's happening in the last days, they say in that, oh, we see that y'all have woken up. You have, uh, you have been awakened. Mm -hmm. You have woke up. Yeah. Uh, you're not sleeping anymore. And that's the way it is with a lot of pastors. Yes. What's taking place is they're actually, they're sleeping. Yeah. They are asleep. But when you are awakened to what's going on around you, you go, whoa. Look yeah. at this here. Look what's going on uh, all around you. It's like like people going into Vietnam. Yeah. When they go into Vietnam, they go in and they when they went there, these new recruits recruits come off. They go, man, look at all the. I don't really know what's happening, but after you go into the battlefield, when you in the jungle, and then and you come back, you your senses come alive. Yeah. You 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 start sensing things you never sensed before, yeah. and you get out. You're just like the other ones now who are in the battle. That's why that's why you'll see a lot of people have been in law enforcement. For, for a long time. They go into a restaurant with their family to eat. They'll eat with their back to the wall where they can see everything that's going on around them. Um, they they become so careful. They go into a grocery store just to get some bread. They look in the store before they walk through it. I yeah. mean, they become so alert to the conditions that they don't want to walk in to a trap that's right and that's the way we i think that's what god is trying to do yeah for us is to educate the body of christ on what's going on around us you i mean here's the things that we're going to deal with people who have been demonically influenced in yeah. church and they're tormented they don't know why they're tormented with memories they don't know what's been put in them and uh and things like that so let, hey let's do this here it's uh 242 it is um august the 4th 2016 if you listen to this any other time then right now, on August the 4th, you are listening to a rebroadcast of Project Seer. <laughs> we're talking about entities, Trey Smith, uh, IDE Thomas. Uh, we're talking about all kinds of things. You go, go to the YouTube, uh, go YouTube, go to studio, WUCC999.com. And, man, I'm telling you what, there's some good information there that you can follow up with. But let's do this here real quick. Let's open the phone lines. Up. we yes. got about 20 minutes, 803-335-3131. Got a comment, got a question. I'm looking at the phone right now. If you call in, we'll put you here. You got a comment, got a question. 803-335-3131. Put you live on the air on WCC 99.9, .9, the voice of truth. Yeah. Now, here's my disclaimer. Uh -huh. This can be, um, this program may or may not reflect the views and opinions 
of the owners and staff of WCC 99.9. You can look at this program as just being totally nothing but fictitious. Oh, here we go. We got a caller right here. Hey, caller, you're live and on the air. You got a comment? You got a question? Good afternoon, Pastor Schaefer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sandy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. What you got Um, for us? Can you hold on for just a second? Hold on. She's turning that echo down over there. Echo, echo. There you go. Absolutely. I'm loving the show. And uh, I am calling with um, an experience that happened to me when I was seven years old. Okay. Tell us about it. When I was six years old, my mother uh, took me to took me to church and uh, dedicated me and gave me to the Lord. And, um, of course, she took me to church all the time. And I was in the second grade, the beginning of the second grade. And uh, I woke up to go to school. All right. And I, I had a dream. A beautiful person. I can't say if it was a man or a woman. In, in white robes. Beautiful white. Um appeared to me and told me that my mamma was going to be taken to heaven. All right. And I was, very, I was very close to my paternal grandmother. And I did not say anything to my mother. She took me to school, and two hours later she came to get me because they had word that my grandmother had passed away during the night. And when she told me that, I told her about, I considered it an angel. And what the angel had told me, and she was stunned because there was no way that I could have been as calm as I was. I was very calm because the angel had told me they were taking my mamma to heaven. And uh, I just wanted to share that. I've had, that was when I was very young. And of course, when you give your life to the Lord, he blesses you with other visions or uh, dreams, depending on what, where you are in your walk with him. But that was very early on, and I remember that as clearly as if I'd had this dream last night. Wow. So I wanted to share that. Thank you. And I'm loving loving the show. Yeah, you didn't have fear, did you? I had no fear. It was was love. It was, was, I was given a message that said, uh, uh, your mamma is going to be going to heaven. And I was not scared. I felt love. And it's like, you know, it's, it's like it was okay. Yes. So when my mother came to get me at school two hours later, and she told me that my grandmother had died, I said, I know. And she said, what do you mean you know? And I told her. And uh, I was very calm. And, you know, for a second grader to be calm when you've lost a, a grandparent, you know how close children are to grandparents. Uh, I've always remembered that. Evangelist Watson, always. Mm-hmm. And by the way, while I have you on the line, your messages are wonderful. Thank you. I am so blessed by your messages. Uh, you keep preaching the way you're preaching. I'm loving it. Well, let's uh, just give God, God the glory, you. okay? God I, bless you both. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank Bye-bye. you. God bless you. All right. Let's go ahead and thank you, Sister Sandy. God bless you. Let's go ahead and uh, see if there's another caller out there who's got a, a, an encounter a visitation you know we had one just the other day that was sharing with us um and it was a person who had said that uh they were growing up yes and um in the closet yeah. right outside of the closet uh in their room uh you know one of these uh, aliens appeared right out of the closet and walked over to the person and um you know they were like um stunned you know couldn't move paralyzed and uh inserted yes. a tube uh, right in their wrist. Yes. You know, and uh, um, you know, the person was able to share share the story. And this person um, was this person was saved. Oh lives, yeah. Lives mm-hmm. a sanctified life, been filled with the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. and and since uh, early age. And this person's probably, I would say, in their at least their you know late forties. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're still they but, were still encountering it. But praise God, they got deliverance. That's right. And the thing is, is that. These kind of things are people, this is a venue where you can share with this, and uh, people need prayer. You can be set yes. free from anything that, that happened as well. So call us, 803-335-3131. You've got a comment, you got a question, uh, call us here uh, at the studios of WUCC. I'm looking right here at the phone right now. 
And if you'll call in, we'll put you live on there. Give us a comment. Got a question? It's great, brother. Yeah, and you know one of the things that you know, I, I'm not a. I don't want to sound like I. I don't believe things can happen naturally, but there are so many things that are happening in the world right now. There is a large amount of scientists across the world that are dying mysteriously. They're just they're just dying. Yeah, and 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 it's and it's very odd. And then there's been. Uh, uh, there's been generals who are who are who are dying because they you know of old age and on their deathbed they're confessing that that the government uh, lied and that they were used as a proxy to develop that lie and they want to get that off their chest and they're saying why well, they getting ready to go to heaven or hell they want to make a confession <laughs> yeah and they're telling you know what you were told wasn't true uh, what happened there really did happen. Hello, caller. You're live down there. You got a comment? Got a question? Hey, Pastor Schaefer, this is Rachel Blanton. Hey, Rachel, tell us something good. Good to hear from uh, you. Well, I, just, I'm, I'm, I so appreciate this program, and and I agree with Sister Sandy. I, I love both both uh, both uh, Steve Watson's messages and, and your messages. I just I just love what y'all what y'all bring to the table. And I don't so. want to say two things. Go ahead. The first thing, the first thing I want to say is I had a very similar experience, like what Sandy mentioned. I was uh, 14 years old when my when my uh, grandmother died, and I had had surgery on my knee. Oh, excuse me, I was 15. I had had surgery on my knee. I was in 10th grade at South Aiken High School, and we had been called back to uh, Charleston because um, man, I was just we knew she was going to die. And in the middle of the night, I had a dream that she. Or, or vision I'm, I'm not sure what it was that we were on her front porch on james island uh me and papa were sitting in the swing and she came out the front door in a dress and it was at one of the dresses that hung in her closet and she never wore a dress a lot of times she wore a pantsuit every once in a while she'd wear a dress but in this thing she had a dress on and she walked away from me and was she says honey i'm going to the store i'm, I'm uh, honey i'm leaving and and papa didn't say anything to her and i said oh mama i want to go with you and she said oh no honey she turned around she said you got to stay here baby you got work to do and she walked off the porch and didn't go down the stairs she walked off the porch and out of sight wow at that at that moment the phone rang at my aunt evelyn's house in goose creek where i was staying because my brother and I had gone into her room the night before at Roper Hospital and basically told her goodbye. We loved her and that, you know, we knew she was suffering and it was okay for her to go. And um, when the phone rang at 8.30 that next morning, I knew my grandmother was gone. Nobody had to tell me. I was not upset, just like what Sandy said. I was not upset. I was not crying. And from then on, any person who has ever died around me, I might miss the person, but I'm never worried about where they're going because that somehow God communicated to me in that experience that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes, amen. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. And my second thing I want to say is on uh, where Pine Log and Silver Bluff split, and there's a, the first road when you get past the Wyatt development here in Aiken, there is a road called Town Creek. Yes, I know where it is. Um, my sister-in-law, uh, she used to be married to Walter's brother, Tim. Her name is Scarlett. And she and I were driving together in her car, Little Rabbit, a Little Rabbit, and uh, pulled off the side of the road because I kept noticing. I'm a sky watcher, and I kept noticing something in the sky, and, and I knew it wasn't flying like a plane. And as I looked up, right there at the intersection of Town Creek and the Silver Bluff side, we stopped that intersection because I had managed to figure out this was a plane and i get out of the car to look at it and it's like all the crickets stop cricketing everything around me stopped making noise and as i look up there is a triangular shaped um ship above me and in the center is like a honeycomb pattern and and it's white in the center but each light on the corners on the three corners were different yeah. They were different. Mm. They they were like a honeycomb look to them, but the lights were varied and changing or something. And I was so mesmerized at it. Scarlett got really scared at whatever was whatever uh, had my attention did not have hers. And she snatched me literally from the inside of the car. She sat back down in the car and she snatched me from the backside of my hair and the backside of my clothing and pulled me back in the car. 
And she said, that thing's fixing to take you. And we pulled off as fast as we could. <laughs> <laughs> Smart girls. And it was a, <laughs> and it was over. Yeah, it was over as fast as it started. How but high it, was it? it? How high do you think it was, Rachel? Above you? It was. It was probably two car lengths above the tree line, right there at the intersection of uh, Town Creek and Silver Bluff Road. You know wow. where? Uh, right before you get to where that. Uh, I can't think of what it's called. W- Woodside is. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you this here. Uh, uh-huh. What What was the about? What year you think that was? Oh, let's see now. My girls were born so i'm gonna say 1996 probably 1996 wow okay wow maybe 1995 somewhere along in there and you know and you know that you know you witnessed that so you 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 know it was real you know what you saw and you're an intelligent person and and Mm -hmm. and and what people that might not believe you or not be able to understand you have to think about it if you if you if you think about the bases the the military bases that yes. are with are with probably within short distance of where we are in in South Carolina uh actually if you were in a supersonic aircraft military aircraft uh Warner Robins Georgia is not that far away you could probably in a supersonic jet leave uh, Warner Robins Air Force Base and be over this area in less than four minutes. So mm. there are bases generally all in this area of the United States uh, where aircraft that have been tested or secret aircraft could uh, easily be flying in these areas that we don't even oh, yes, have sir. any idea about. But we yes. also have to know that when human beings see something, uh, and they know it happened. Um, that you know, sometimes it's going to be only you that know it knows it really happened. And yes, sir. but but you are intelligent enough to know that you're not blind and you're not dumb. You 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 know you didn't just fall off a turnip truck. I mean That's something right. something happened. And um, right. and so um, I think what we're what we're really seeing in this day and age is the Bible says there'll be signs and wonders. In the in the yes, in the skies, and I love how you said, "I watch the skies." I'm a sky watcher. You know, I'm watching the skies too, and I'm watching for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, and I sir. believe one day He's going to split the eastern sky, and He's going to yes, take sir. the church away. And I praise That's God the for that. I'm looking, yes, oh, sir. Hallelujah! And the devil's trying to distract well, you. You know, uh, Rachel, when I when I go through this listing that uh, I D E Thomas has uh, in his book by um, Heineck. Um, and he came up with um, the close encounters. Your close encounter would be visual sighting of an unidentified flying object seemingly less than 500 feet away that show an appreciable uh, angular extension in considerable detail. Yes. So you could tell that it was um, triangle. It had as great oh, yes, detail sir. as honeycombs. Yours would be oh, yes, the close sir. encounters of the first guy. Yeah. Uh, is what well, I would see yours uh, being uh, designated as. Whatever whatever was going on changed the atmosphere, and it, it hmm. got my attention to the point, you know, because I was the kid in high school that wanted to be the astronaut and was doing all the right stuff to go do that. Mm-hmm. And then my knee injury that I mentioned when my grandmother died is the very reason why I could not join the military. Wow. I'm from a military family. So my intention was to do those things, and I had always been fascinated with the astronomy of the stars and and how God set those things in the heavens. And understanding that we are on the cusp of these, you know, Jesus coming and these signs and wonders in the sky, it, it, it would take an absolute... And, and absolutely, a person who lives in an absolute denial not to recognize all of the things that are going on around us that are just, you know, pointing the sign towards Jesus. Hey, hey, pay attention. Yes. We, he's, he's on the way. Hey, hey. <laughs> And well, so we're going to have to cut it off. It. We've got just a couple of minutes to get out of here. Rachel, thank you so much uh, for your phone call. You really added a lot to our program as well. And Sandy, thank you so much for yes. yours. And um, brother, uh, well, thank you for doing this program. Yes, yeah, what ma'am. Y'all do is amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, tell, tell all your friends thank and all you. your neighbors about us. Okay. God bless you. Yes, sir. I do. I do. <laughs> bye bye. God bless. Bye bye. Wow, brother, what are you thinking? This is just getting real I, I, nightmare, I, isn't it? I believe we're just we're just touching the uh, 
the the tip of the iceberg and and in the future we're going to be bringing hopefully some programs that we're going to look at a lot of different areas to try to wake up uh people's minds and hearts to to be aware and 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 not be deceived but also to be aware of what the devil is 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 putting out there we're looking at the end times that's exactly right well brother i'm gonna go ahead and get my uh goodbyes out of here and then you're gonna i'm gonna go make the swap and you can take it on out of here the rest of that and uh when you get ready you're finished with yours what i've been your host henry schaefer of uh, project seer man it's been great talking about entities i want to encourage you get the book let me go ahead get the book uh the omega conspiracy get trey smith information uh, uh la marzuli there's a there's a whole host yes of men who have already went before us uh, in doing that um you know studies about the entities and all these different things there but i want to encourage you uh to open up your eyes uh, pastors and see what's going on all around you uh but i've been your host henry schaefer and god bless you uh brother steve i'm gonna let you have it i'm just gonna say we love y'all god bless you keep listening to us and uh, uh we appreciate your comments and we appreciate uh you calling in when you uh you're listening on the program we'll be praying for you pray for us and uh, pray for brother hall he's down there in peru you know i don't i don't know what he's doing down there but i do know he's preaching the gospel of jesus christ there you go thank you for tuning in today we've been your host henry schaefer and steve hall the end times are here anything is possible are you ready don't miss the next episode of special edition in time for revelations.